Sometimes being a professed Christian is kind of hard, you know, because everyone likes to come right up to your face and tell you exactly why you're wrong, but also it's hard especially in these times to know what the Bible says about certain social issues. Well, you no longer need to wonder. So, what does the Bible say about spiritual pacifism? Just as my intro into every video states, people like to come right up to her face and tell us exactly why we're wrong. But what do we as Christians do if that happens to us? Do we sit back and simply turn the other cheek or do we correct them and tell them why they're wrong? And is there some imaginary line that we shouldn't cross or do we do anything that we can to change someone's beliefs? Well, these are all great questions and I'm going to answer them. By the way, I got my new camera back, don't know if you could tell, but... I'm excited because now my videos will not look quite as bad. Did you know that as of 2012 there was reported to be 2.18 billion Christians in the world? That's almost seven times the amount of people living in the U.S. And in the U.S. there are 247 million proclaimed Christians which is well over half the total population. So why is the world so far away from what God wants? I mean, this is ridiculous. Almost a third of the world are believers, or at least say that they believe, in the Bible, and yet, well, here we are. Not only is this pathetic, but it's also blasphemous in and of itself. Think about it. Two billion people say that they believe in Jesus Christ, and yet it's somehow offensive and oppressive to tell others about Christ outside of church. Are you kidding me? I mean, only 17% of the baby boomers didn't believe in something, whereas of 2007, 35% of the population don't believe anything at all. And if you're questioning where I'm getting all these numbers, I made them up. No, I'm kidding. The link is in the description. Go ahead and check it out. I'm right. I promise. Well, look, these numbers are unacceptable, and I'm going to tell you how we can make those numbers actually mean something. So the first question I posed was whether or not to straight up argue with someone over Jesus. Well, that, that's a no. I mean, how many times have you been yelled at to do something and that alone made you not want to do it? Uh, well, the same concept kind of applies here. 2 Corinthians 2, 3 through 6 says, We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. And yeah, I know that sounds kind of harsh, but later on he comments saying that he won't be ashamed of the authority given to him by the Lord. And well, neither should we. He says it right there that we need to destroy every proud obstacle. Now, I don't think this is a physical thing that we need to destroy, but rather the arrogance of atheists or other non-believers. And yet, destroy sounds kind of harsh, but it just simply means to put an end to something. Like their arrogance and attitude. But it makes it clear right there that if someone is talking their face off about their beliefs, we have a duty given to us by God to tell them why they're wrong. Tastefully, that is. Like I said before, yelling at someone to do something isn't going to let them experience Christ through you at all. But it almost seems as if this is the opposite case for Matthew 5.39, as it says, But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other cheek also. Most people prefer the Old Testament's an eye for an eye deal, but Jesus says that he's preaching about revenge to offer the other cheek. Well, see, that's just it. He's preaching about revenge not about spreading the word. And to back this up, in the same chapter in Matthew 5, 19, he says, So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So that effectively answers my second question. But what about the third question? Is there a line that we shouldn't cross? Hmm... Like, what if we see this person at a public park and witness them over and over and over again to no avail? Do we continue or heighten our efforts, or do we simply give up? Well, neither. When we witness to someone in an honest and sincere way, well, we've, we've done our job. Our jobs as Christians is to go out and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. We are to plant the seeds and, well, move on. 
Think about regular church services, like the ones that have been around for like a thousand years. The pastor preaches on a certain topic, and you don't have really the opportunity to ask questions until after the sermon, that is. This is why small groups were made. They were made so you can ask literally as many questions you can possibly think of with other believers. I believe John Wesley is actually one of the first to really capitalize on this whole small group thing. Uh, you know, when he was, like, forming the Methodist Church. I don't know if you've heard of them or not, but, you know, he did that. But the point is, there is a line, because, as I said earlier, the more you annoy someone, the less receptive to what you're saying they are. So, just share what you believe and what makes you believe. As 1 Peter 3, 15 says, Be prepared for any argument by reading the word. Well, that's really the only way to convince anyone. So, just share what makes you believe, and why you believe it, and as 1 Peter 3.15 says, I know this isn't a direct quote, but it's what it sums up as is be prepared for any argument by reading the word of God. That's really the only way to convince anyone. That and they have to go through some life-altering experience like in a movie or something, but you know, whatever. Look, I'm tired of spiritual pacifism. Take this movie for instance. The Andrew Garfield plays Desmond Doss, who believed in Jesus Christ and said, I'm not picking up a gun at all and I'm not shooting anybody. Instead, I'm going to go into this war and I'm going to save lives. He didn't bow down to what other people wanted just because everybody else was doing it. And that's what I love about that movie besides the fact that he's totally awesome in every single aspect of the movie. He is standing up for what he believes in no matter what else anybody says. And that's what I'm so sick of seeing today. There are 2.18 billion proclaimed Christians around the world, and yet here we are having debates about abortion and gay rights and all this other stuff that the Bible is so clear about. None whatsoever. In fact, I challenge you to name just one, just one instance, and let me know so I can tell you why you're wrong. The world is a mess because the love of Christ is missing in people, and they're filling it with, well, garbage. We, as followers of Christ, are the only ones who know how to fix this world. I'll leave you guys with this, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So do as Jesus commanded and go. So what was my act of random kindness? Earlier this week, somebody made me very, very upset um, about something that, eh, yeah, it was kind of my fault. But either way, the way that they approached the situation, their attitude at least with the whole thing, just made me like bitter, like for a day. Like I was, I was angry when I woke up the next morning and I was like, whoa, Kyle, what are you doing? And as much as I really don't want to, I realize really now, especially after reading this, is that I've got to forgive them. And while they might not know what I did, and well, honestly, I don't think anybody knows who I'm talking about, maybe, the point is, is that I forgave them because we are the embodiment of Christ's love, and I can't go around preaching this stuff if I'm mad at somebody because they wanted to curse me out or something. So what are you supposed to get from that? I, if someone makes you mad, you've probably made somebody else mad. You want them to forgive you, so you do the same for other people. So if you found this episode intriguing and you want to go see more, go ahead and hit subscribe so you'll be immediately notified for the next video or, or you know you can go ahead and hit the ones that are already out there's a lot of good ones in here i bet if you watch them all you'll notice something really cool probably not but if you do it anyways it'll be cool because i'll know i'll see it so yeah and a couple months ago i started a thing called the action of the week where we as christians go out and do some act of random kindness which is a reference to evan almighty i'll be doing it as you saw and i hope you will too and please let me know i really want to know if you guys are doing an act of random kindness God bless, and may the force be with you. 47 million proclaim click. It's kind of like that Weird Al song, Amish Paradise. Um, uh, da 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 da. And I turn the other cheek. I really don't care. In fact, I wish him well. In fact, I'm laughing my head off when he's burning an H-E double hockey stick. I love going, neither. Because I'm like, look at me being all smart.
Look at that. I gave you two options and I pick a third one. Look at me, I'm an econ teacher. Why did I sound like Yoda? Mmm. The less receptive to what they're saying you are. Mmm. -hmm. Seagulls. Mm -hmm. Take this movie, for instance. Shoot, I already forgot the name of them. Poop. Uh, Take this movie, for instance. <laughs> Shoot, that scared me. So if you found this episode intriguing and you want to go see more, go ahead. <laughs>